You good? One, two, one, two. You got me? Now I can hear you. Now I can hear you. Yes. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yes. You, you. We live, man. Where, where's the All music? Right. Where's the music? Cue the music. I couldn't hear you. Yeah. Let me just show every Tuesday. Here in the dishes of St. Kofa. Let's go. Every time. Yeah. Big up, big up, man. Reminisce show every Tuesday, carrying the traditions of St. Kofa. Because sometimes we got to go back and collect what we may have forgotten and to move forward, man. But, yo, we're going to keep it real hip-hop, keeping the foundation strong and alive right here every time, every week, man. That's what we do, yeah, man. Peace, righteous. Peace, righteous. Homie, homie. Salute to the brother righteous, man. I keep saying this, man. We got to have him featured again, man, because low-key righteous has a lot of history, man. Like, he has a lot of stories. You know, be a lot to share, a lot to contribute. You know, be likes to just play it cool, man. But he, yo, he's he, he's like a whole like encyclopedia right there. You know what I'm saying? So we got to get him on and remember this show soon time, soon time. And word up, word up to that for real. I love heads like that, man. Definitely check out the All the Way Live Hip Hop Network. It's just real. I was checking it this week, and I just it's just music on the. I, I like to hear music on the internet. It's just DJs playing boom bap hip hop you know it's not all boom bap but it's hip hop hip hop hip hop hip hop for the people they got all kinds of shows tune in and yo this just i just want to shout out to also we love hip hop network because friday is just man uh, i just really like people in the media who are just like honestly no agendas no fuckery i just speak for the people and i speak for the music and just anybody who's just repping like that it's just salute like that so Yo, yeah, right, man. just man, we'd, we'd be honored to come on your show well, as soon as you got the moments, man. Let's go, man. Anytime, man. Like, just say less, man. You already know. Align the schedules is there, man. What you need from us is already yours, yo. So that's real. Let's do yo, it, man. Let's yo, do when it. The time feels, as soon as the time feels good, boom. My schedule is right here. <laughs> we lock it in. But yeah, man, yeah. yo, it's so good, man. Yo, I, um, I wanted to shout out. I mean, you're going to get into it, but even before we get, no, no, no. How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> we got it. Yo, um, yeah, let's do our quick check in before we get into the business. Um, yo, right now, man, I am I'm I'm feeling under the weather. Yo, I, I have like a cold, I've been sneezing like all day and all night. Like, you know, I, I can't smell anything. Um I don't have COVID. You know, I did my 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 rapid test and whatever, so at least that's that's that. Okay, but okay. Um, it's been it's been a minute since I've like felt like this, you know, and um you know, it's just the universe telling me to kind of, you know, I gotta slow down sometimes. I just gotta, you know, breathe yeah. and yeah. and you know, I, I'm always trying to do the most, you know. Um, and I'm always got my hands like an octopus and all different kinds of things or whatever. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm gonna take some time to slow down and just, you know, you know, put put health first. So oh, please, but please do that. that we need yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But um, other than that, you know, um, I'm, I'm excited just for like the energy that's happening in Toronto. As, as you know, we got to interview uh, Director X, uh, Drop the Needles coming out, Black Panther. And we're going to share some of these these things coming up. But um, this is what's keeping me going. Like, you know, I, I just like the fact that people are contributing and and doing things that are inspirational, you know, that 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 somehow connect with like history and storytelling, because that's so crucial and for us to be telling our own stories you know i think that's amazing so i'm just Man. feeling good excited to get into it you're so right you're so right um i don't know if we i guess it was was it just last friday um the kamau show were you the kamau showed his documentary oh, the, the one that we right. were talking about here um he showed his documentary at the well first i'm doing real good i i'm yes <laughs> happy i'm happy i'm healthy um yes yeah, weird I'm, I'm drinking my my appetite's weird but i'm happy because there's so much beautiful things happening in the culture yes and and, and i'm blessed I, it already made me think about some of the beautiful events that i was at and one of them was kamau's kamau's screening where he showed his yes. document and he spoke with his mother 
And and I just wanted to jump to that real quick because Kamal's mom and Kamal, both of them said it so clearly and powerfully. They're like, and the way that they say it is, it's just, it even has extra truth to it because Kamal, right. Kamal's mom is apparently the first black filmmaker, uh, f- first woman, uh, black woman filmmaker in Canada. So yeah, she even started and, like a whole collective. I can't remember what the name is, but like, I know that she's one of the founding peoples of like this like black film collective and whatnot. So they were like yeah. pioneers that really set the tone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they showed some clips of her in the seventies. They showed some clips of her pregnant with Kamau. Like it was like wild. Oh, like, like, like not just not just pregnant with Kamau. Like literally his birth, yo. Like, I, I thought birth, that was yeah, incredible to capture that. So it's like, and and in that, doc, I don't want to give too much away for those who may yeah. want to want to see that or whatever. But there's this one scene where she's like at least eight months pregnant. And she's still running, like active. With Kamau in the belly. <laughs> Kamau in the yeah. belly. It's, it's so dope. real. It's so real. It's so real. But I'm saying all this to say, at the end of it, the culmination of pretty much all they were saying, because both Kamau and his mom both showed documentaries. So right. they were like, tell our own stories. It is so vital. We tell our own stories the way we want us. We want our facts to be told to the world right. the way we want to be seen, the way we, the things that we focus on, our messages, our truth, whatever. And they're like, no matter what, if anybody else does it, it just doesn't come out that close to the heart. Well, you know? so, they, and, and they even, I would even go as far as to say what they said, which is that we have a duty. You know what I mean? So it's not just like, yeah, tell stories because it's cool. It's like you actually have a duty because. If you exist, man, you have a story, and, and that voice like matters. You need to speak your truth and let that that knowledge be born. You know, so that's Max. what's up. So real, so real. So I was blessed to see that there was mad family there. Peace to Ty Harper and, and, and uh, Big Sprox. Big Sprox. yeah, yeah, Shell Sprox. building. All kind of good Toronto heads were there, and uh, man, change, brother, change from Pangea Project. Oh man, it's so good to see. See yeah, of what, a few things that I also love just, you know, about that night, because I, I, I was there as well. And, um, you know, both of us got like, you know, some some shout outs, you know what I'm saying? So so that, that, that was pretty, pretty blessed, you know, to be acknowledged. And I love how Kamau bigged up Oakwood. You know what I mean? Like, he, you know, he made up Espinada, but Oakwood is like a whole like that school, that energy. And a lot of people from Oakwood where we're there at Show of Love. So yeah, um, and just really how, how we take up these spaces. And I love how we mentioned about spaces, even though sometimes these places didn't respect us. But these are spaces that we navigated. And even the, the venues that rejected us, we still had, you know, the front steps of Oakwood or certain alleyways, you know, I mean, graffiti alleyway on Queen Street, you know, before, you know, the Loblaws and all that kind of stuff or whatever's there. So, yeah, man, tell our stories. That's why we do this every week, you know, That's document our stories, make sure it gets told, interview the people that were there. And that's what's up. But speaking of documentaries, just you know, as as we can go full with this, uh, the trailer for Drop the Needle has been released, and I would like to play a bit of that. So for those who don't know, uh, Drop the Needle is a documentary of the legendary Play to Record record store in Toronto, which was just like an iconic spot, cultural hub, a place where anybody involved in the culture you 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 would pass there and connect Man. with like the, the owner Eugene, right? So family. Eugene Donna, Donna, yeah, shout out to Donna also, and all the people working there, uh, Sadiq, uh, Jason Palma. Man, there's so many real ones that came through Plady, and uh, yo, it, like it was just before it moved off Young Street when it was in the back of a there was the nice little spot there where you get your little bodega stuff, and it was just tucked in. It was a they had. It was, I think, the first time I saw Nas's autograph on anything. He had a big poster of Illmatic, and Nas has his really ugly handwriting, and he just says, peace to you, Gene, the play D, and, like, it's just, it, like, there's so much history there. There's, a mo- I'm pretty sure there's a Mob Deep signed infamous poster in there as well, and there's just so many people who came through play D. It's that documentary is going to be so vital and important to Toronto history. Thank you to everybody who put it together, and like shout out to Play D. Yeah. Um, and, and we're we're and, and we're we're definitely going to be there. Uh, from my understanding, it's already sold out, so it's going to be a packed show. You know, Reminisce Show is going to come with some exclusive coverage, some interviews, as 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 we've been really be more proactive with 
you know, with the partnership with HitStory and whatnot. But uh, we'll get into more of that. But here's the trailer for Drop the Needle. Yep. Classic. Thanks, Kali. You're a good one. A new location. And people would always tell me, oh, the store is an institution, da, da, da. I was like, okay, all right, all right, okay, cool, no problem. It's only when we started doing this documentary, I, oh, maybe we did have some something to do with it. Tuning into a city's, not just club culture, but music culture, record stores have long been at the heart of that. You're like, all these big dog DJs are there and you're like, whoa, 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 that's all, oh, wow, wow, okay, this is what they do. The front of the store is selling everything from like pornographic movies and, you know, fake handguns and daggers. You know, and Gene was there, his wife worked there, his parents were there. It was such a family run operation. Everybody was going to him, he was the go-to guy. The mixtape DJs, the radio DJs, the club DJs, the strip club DJs. If you were not played a record on Thursday, you feared that you missed something. The vibe and the intensity was crazy. It was definitely above and beyond a record store. It's one of those questions. It's like, where would we be without played a record? It was that important to my career. To be honest, never mind like the record deal part. We're like, yo, we get to go to play the record? It's all an ecosystem. And play the record is the hub of it. Which is crazy. That environment helped stimulate the art that comes from the city. Twenty-one years of pure bulls. It makes me wanna bang my hairs off the walls and do some like all the straight swarms in the malls. Yeah. That's so weird. Different music, man. <laughs> All right. Yeah, man. So I'm excited for this. Uh, I think it's going to be incredible. I, I, I'm just, I can only imagine the people who's going to be there. That's what I'm really excited for. And the interviews that we'll be able to capture. Because we, we, we get it, everybody. Get it, oh, everybody. Man. Getting right there early, just leaving the camera on. Just, man, it's going to be sick. It's going to be sick. That's it. Oh man, shout out oh, everyone in there, man. Mad love to everyone, the fam. Clickety click is up in there. <laughs> Bell Boogie. Oh, you, Bell. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. that. Um, you know, keeping it keeping it moving, um, you know, with just some more coverage, you know, because we always bring exclusives. Um, we got to uh, you know, check out Louis Blanche and um, you know, Director X and their whole um movement with Operation Prefrontal Cortex. And there was this um, series called Awakenings, All Power to the People. And they were hosting like a guided meditation uh, for those on site. It was a, a beautiful vibe. Uh, I believe, you know, the, you know, the, the, the massive, you know, uh, black power Afro pick with the fist is going to be there till at least like October 10th, which is in the area of Fort York. Now, Fort York has like a lot of like his, history in terms of like, you know, I mean, for one, like indigenous, you know, like lands, whatever, but like there was a lot of like colonial history. So it's just really interesting for it to take place at that specific site out of all places, which I thought was really strategic. Um, we were able to get this interview. So I'm gonna play this interview real quick and then we can talk about X a little bit because he has some other things um, in the works, which is pretty uh, pretty exciting. So let me get to this uh, screen share and play this uh, interview that we, did for our good peoples in Montreal hit story miss our new collaboration reminisce show hit story and yeah man so let's get it oh shit oh where's the volume the volume's gone Oh, you see the volume? Oh, okay, okay. Hold on. Yeah, there's no volume. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We'll do a take two. We'll do a take two. Do a take two. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got you. All right, let's do this. I was, yeah. Rewind. Yeah. <laughs> 
Fight, fight, fight. It's free. I'm here for a hit story and reminisce show, but we are with the legendary, visionary, Director X. Brother, you've done so many things for the culture and for the generation, but this is a special, special creation that you've done here. So I'm very honored. I, I was happy to participate with it and, and clear my mind and stuff. But to somebody who doesn't understand the value, can you explain to them what you're trying to do? Meditation is uh, it's essentially brain exercise. Yeah. In the same way you know that you need to go at least take a walk. You need to exercise your body. Like, you know you have to exercise your body. Yeah. The brain needs that same exercise. And meditation is how you do it. Perfect. Right? So remove the idea that it's just monks and mountains and woo-woo kind of stuff at its base, at its core. This is brain exercise. And when you do it, your decision-making part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex gets bigger. And the, uh, the emotional control of your brain, your gut, gets smaller. Just like, just like normal exercise. The gut gets smaller, the muscles get bigger. Wow. Stress makes your amygdala, that emotional part, yeah. get bigger. Wow. Wow. And stress makes the decision-making part, your prefrontal cortex, get smaller. Word. Right? Childhood abuse and neglect has the same effect. It shrinks the prefrontal cortex. So real. It enlarges the amygdala. Neglect. Hitting your kid and neglecting your kid do the same thing. Shrink the prefrontal cortex, enlarging the amygdala. So your emotions are big, your decision-making is small. Wow. Same with stress. does the same thing. This is brain damage. And you can fix it through meditation. Amen. Meditation, again, makes your prefrontal cortex bigger. That's decision-making. It makes your amygdala, the emotional control, smaller. Better control of your emotions, more decision-making power. This is what meditation does for you. I do a little meditation. I, I really become one with music and art and love and, and, and inner peace. And I just want to ask, like, the, the version of you that is breathing and, and working on this now, like, you could really feel a difference between the younger you that maybe oh, was... Without a doubt. Without yeah. a doubt. I yeah. wish. If I could go back in time and give one piece of advice to my younger me, it would be to meditate. Word. Word. That would be that. If you, get to point, if you got one moment, you know what I mean? That would be it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. And so this isn't the first time that you've created something for Nui Blanche, though. This is... Yeah, but this isn't my creation. This oh. is a different artist. This this artist here, like it says over there, Hank Willis Thomas Okay, is is the artist here. But we're, we're putting the... You know, it just felt like this being here at Fort York... This being, you know, the Black Power hair pick, it yes. just felt like the right place to do something with Operation Prefrontal Cortex. Operation Prefrontal Cortex is born out of uh, finding a new way to deal with gun violence, a new way to deal with that that reactive mind. Yeah, right. Sh short yeah. short term fear, not a real solution. Just a, a fear based, right. power based. Uh, it's the socioeconomics of. Violence and guns is out of our control. Yes. But if we can get to the individual, have them begin to meditate, and their snap point begins to change, where they might have snapped over here. Yeah. You're right. I can move that way down. So, so, you know what? If I can get, you know what I mean? So, I'm not, we're not, we're, we're realistic. A certain man ain't putting their gun down. So, if you're not going to put the gun down, then maybe I can change when you pull it out. You're maybe right. I can change when you decide to use it. To a point where you, you know, what I mean, that, that we're we're in a different space with this. Amen. Right? So Amen. That, that, and then on the flip side of it is for those who live around the gun violence, the trauma of seeing your friends get uh, shot, the trauma of being around a shooting, of, of having to run for your life. These are these have great effects on you, absolutely. Especially when you're very young, meditation can also help with that trauma. So that is this is our approach to the violence in our community is through meditation. Amen, brother. We all we really do need the healing, and we know Babylon isn't healing us. They want to exploit us, extort us, kill us, and murder us. So, honestly, anybody in the community that's really contributing something, it, it's it's God's work. It's divine angel earth work that you are doing, and really thank you for it. Oh, right? Thank like, you, brother. Appreciate yeah. you. We also are going to walk around, and we are going to go check out like you got to see it all some over. other some other new bar stuff. Yeah, they, yeah, you did that globe right a couple yeah, years ago. Yeah, I did yeah. Death of the sun. That, oh. that's right. That was wild. That's wild. And then Drake ended up touring with that, right? Yeah, and like, Drake yeah, took yeah. It on the road. So, like, I, I just wanted to ask, like, creating something so big, like, how. How, how difficult is it? Uh, do you need, uh, you need teams? You need, you need like, teams, you need patience, you need time. It's a whole thing, but it's uh, great, great to do. I mean, 
basically put a science experiment in front of City Hall. So that's dope. That's dope. Well, hey, thank you for this. Thank you, bro. Keep spreading love, X. Every time. All right, man. Yo, we just we just producing okay. mad content, man. That's that's just all it is right now. Excellent. You know, like, the, right, the right partnerships, the right content. Like we already have everything we need, and and I love this partnership because you know we 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 can use the content that that we shoot on on the show. You know what I mean? So it's just like, hey, man, we we're here having virtual conversations, but we're also on site too. You know what I mean? We're in the field. We we out here. So yeah, no doubt. No doubt, embedded journalism. Hey, oh, so another thing happened. Um, just on Monday, I went to go see Tech Nine. Jeez, um, speak to that man. Yeah, yeah. Tech Nine was so underrated, man. Like he's just one of those guys who's just been like super consistent on the underground scene. But is he st- is he considered underground? I don't know. He's in this weird like space, which is like it's not underground, but. I, I guess kind of ish. I don't know. I don't know. No, like, what, he, what do you think? He, you're exactly right. I, I mean, he's technically kind of underground. He, he's he's about as he's underground worldwide, which is really interesting. Yeah. He owns his own label. You know, he's got a straight music. He, he's basically probably the biggest thing out of his city. He's from Kansas City, but like you know, it's not a massive city, but you know, it's a city that's big enough where he runs his label. He's been touring independently. He's got collaborations with Eminem and Lil Wayne and like big artists. So it's not like he's underground, but at the same time, he's not on a major label, like on, on that level of thing. But like Tech Nine is that weird mix of like probably the most well known underground hip hop artist maybe in the world, or at least in like America, North America. He's like true. So so yeah, like he he's touring, he had a tour bus. Um you know he's doing his thing independently um but uh, i got a little clip from a video that that um uh, that he performed at the danforth music hall shout out to my home girl smacko and my my peoples for getting me out there it was dope it was dope um i'm trying to share it here is this yeah so yeah you can full screen that that would be dope i don't know if you have that ability yeah okay all right, man. Let's. let's so let's I won't play the whole thing, but yeah, it's just some of his wild, wild energy. Very intense stage show. Really, really amazing performer. In the middle of a show, he came out like this. It was honestly like this is I picked a very weird part of the show to share just to just to there were so many parts that were just creative and I, I there was at least four or five things that happened in that show that I had never seen in my life. <laughs> I was like, yo, I've never seen a rapper do that or do this or do and some of it was funny and weird. Like somebody threw up a bag of weed for him to sign and he's like, You want me to sign your weed? <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> He's like, there's a marker here. And he's like, I've never signed someone's weed before. And he pulled out the marker and he signed and he it. Weed. And he did it, yeah. Okay. But then there was some other really creative, wild stuff. He's rhyming. His level of rhyming is top notch. He played his, um, I was looking for his collaboration with Lil Wayne. He unfortunately didn't do that. But he did his collaboration with Eminem. And that yeah. was really intense. 
and then he did Worldwide Choppers, which is if anybody like super rap nerds, they might know Worldwide Choppers is arguably the fastest rap song on the planet. It's like up there with the uh, um Eminem um I think Eminem's on a remix, but Tech Nine, Twista. Busta Rhymes, and then a couple of UK speed rappers. Like it's literally a global, uh, like a global concept of worldwide choppers. Like some of the fastest rappers in the world were like, we're all gonna murder the same yeah. guy. So he did that, and like I'm just yeah. for any rap nerds out there, I saw him do his verse off worldwide choppers, and it's like that's like seeing Slick Rick do Children's Story or like Inspector Deck wow. do his verse in Triumph. So yeah, Tech yeah. Nine is weird, but he's incredibly skilled, incredibly creative. His fans were so into it. The rapping yeah. along was it was fantastic. So like big shout out to him. It was it was one thing like, I always one thing I always give credit to Tech Nine is that no matter how big he gets doing songs with like like the the, the rock and Eminem and so on and so forth, like he always collaborates with like the the like new artists, like underground artists and whatnot. Like I see a lot of these collaborations that popping up in the UK and across Europe and America or wherever. So he's like really in tune and and a few there's only a few artists that I see like that. Like I put Maestro in that category. You know, where, where he's reached a certain level of success and whatnot and still doing his maestro thing, but he's always still connecting with like up and coming artists and keeping young and fresh and all that kind of stuff. You know, I mean fresh west, you feel me? So that's what's up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, it was honestly Tech Nine, it was a really dope show, man. I couldn't I, yeah. I couldn't praise it enough, man. That guy is I also will say, no hype man. No DJ even. They just had somebody on the side stage press and play on his beats, but it was incredible. Yeah. He had everything timed out. It was a very well sequenced. He had a whole movie set that he planned out for his show, oh. and he he murdered it. Like he, you don't see that too much anymore these days. So, so I got. I just got to give Tech Nine his flowers because they don't make rappers like that too much anymore. So it's dope. Um, okay. But uh, yeah, there's a. Uh, what else is popping? What else is popping? Well, I wanted, um, I wanted to. Read, oh yeah, you got anything? Because I I wanted to say something real quick, but what well, you go on? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to play uh, the, the the trailer for uh the the Wakanda Forever, an official trailer too. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, go um, ahead, go ahead. We'd love to. We should kind of end on that happier note because oh, no. I just saw some information came out today that is just like this is the first detail of this case that I'm like, oh, oh okay, it's oh. like that. So um, Tory Lanez apparently talked to academics like yesterday or today. And Tory Lanez said that because his case uh, versus Meg Thee Stallion is finally right. going to trial like this right. month. And Tory Lanez said, he's like, yo, I'm facing up to 24 years in jail for it. So, uh, yeah, I didn't. I like, you know, they were all of that was secret as far as I knew. Yeah. And like, yeah, yeah. Or, but he, he just revealed today. He's like, yeah, this Meg, Meg trial. He's like, it's up to 24 years in jail if if he if he is convicted so he was like you know he's, he was like i can't say much but like right that what that's what's going on so that was just like oh shit man this is it's about to get hella real so, uh, i mean like i gotta i gotta yeah that's what you gotta do you still throw up your hands all right, man. But yo, let's let's uh bring it back on this uh, Black Panther um trailer two, which I'm excited to see this this flick come out. Um so let's see what we got here, man. Let's get it. I might close my eyes at the end because I might not want to see the whole damn thing. I saw some of it already. Only the most broken people. Can be great leaders. His people do not call him general or king. They call him Kukul Khan, the feather serpent god. 
really important. We'll risk eternal war. He's coming. For the surface world. We know what you whisper. They have lost the protector. Show them who we are. Yo, that's that's fire, man. I'm feeling the energy, man. Forever, forever. Whew. Lots of vibes, man. Lots of emotions. Uh, it's powerful, man. It's, it's it's really amazing what like you know film and theater can do, how it can inspire. I know it's Hollywood and whatnot, but you know we got to take it take it for for what it is. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, I mean Hollywood's an extension of stage acting, and stage acting is a tradition that you know that's just a cultural worldwide thing where somebody put it in somebody put it in a real thing like. Uh, yeah. It's bringing real emotions to a fake environment. Uh, and it's just, uh, yeah, and I'm like, it's it's it just so like you know, it's just like yo, the story of like uh, of somebody losing their girlfriend, and you just act it and express it, and you two do your acting, and all of, the whole audience is like, oh shit, I really can relate. I that story right. speaks to me, so and so. Like it's that's it's you know, Hollywood fucked it up on one level for sure. But like the human tradition is to be like, we all would watch each other's stories and learn from each other's triumphs and losses and stuff. Right. That's 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 a tradition. Uh, yeah, I know, and I love that because that connects to what you were talking about, like Kamau and his mother and their documentary uh, endeavors about us tell our stories to share it. Like this is our experiences, and and it was very it's it's relatable. Like as humans, we love to hear those like authentic stories, you know of of joy, pain, sorrow, discomforts and whatnot, because it just reminds us that we're all human and we all go through things, but there's that like light at the end of the tunnel, you know, it's like that even though we may go through these, these, these challenging circumstances, like it's not in vain because at least there's like a lesson and something that could inspire somebody else. Right. So. Oh, that's what it is, fam. Each one teach one. And it's like, yo, if we watch each other and learn from each other, we, we don't, you know, we're not in, all this life alone we don't have to suffer alone we don't have to have, go through the darkest things alone be like oh shit somebody else went to jail i could learn some things to keep me out of jail or so you know somebody else street hustle this is that's that's half of what jay-z's talking about i went through it uh, hove hove did that so you ain't have to go through that he literally says that like like that's that's what we that's what it is so so anyways but um yeah man yo um I don't think I have anything else really. Um, Tory Lane, it's not. Uh, duh, duh, duh. Um, it's it's Russell Simmons' birthday, but I'm also like I'm not that happy with Russell Simmons. But it is his 65th birthday, so I will say a hip hop icon has reached 65 years old today. So acknowledgement to that. So, yeah. but um, uh, rest in peace, Coolio. Yes, for sure. Oh rest yes, peace, right, yeah. yes, of course. R.I.P. Coolio, and uh, yeah, this is unfortunate. But uh, there were some people who were talking about they saw him performing like even up to two weeks ago. So oh, man, wow. he's like, "Yo, man's man's went out like he, he went he went out with his boots on." Like, "Yo, that's sick, right? Just you met him, yo. We need to talk about that story at one point, man. That's sick. I never got to see Coolio, man. I, I'm 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 really on this. I'd rather see even if they're whack. I want to see cats once. Not that Coolio was. What? Yo, he brought him here with Nas. That's sick. That's sick. Right? Just brought Coolio and Nas together. That's dope. <laughs> Excuse me. But anyways, anyways, yeah, shout out to R.I.P. Coolio. And well, that's, you know, with, with that note, man, just that kind of vibe, I feel like it's only right 
to just you know give a little splash but yo righteous man the more he keeps building man the more i'm just like yo we gotta add you on to this man but yo we we wanna wanna add this um oops wait hold on one second audio correct but this is like my favorite this is like his first video um i believe to my knowledge now i know people talk about gangster's paradise which you know we're not going to do that but we're gonna go back to the origins, man. We're gonna take it back. We're gonna take it back to the side. Yo, Fantastic Voyage. Yeah, man. Yes. Take it back, yo. <laughs> Come on, y'all, let's take a ride. Don't you say a word, just get inside. It's time to take your wife on another kind of trip. Cause you can't have to hop if you don't have to get yeah. yo, with the extra. Close your eyes and hit the switch. But no one to a place where everybody kick it, kick it, kick it. Get out the kick it. Ain't no blood, ain't no dipping, ain't no fools in the party set tripping. Everybody got a stack and it ain't no crap. And it really don't matter if you're white or black. I wanna take it there like the staple singer. Put something in the tank and I know that I can bring it. If you can't take the heat, get that out the kitchen. We on a mission. I'm trying to find a place where I can live my life and maybe eat some steak with my beans and rice up. But my kids can play outside without living in fear of a job by. And even if I get away from them job by suckers, I still gotta work my own question. I keep on searching and I keep on. Yes, sir. Oh, the vibe, man. Like, this is just bringing me back. I haven't watched this video in mad years. So, like, just seeing this is bringing me back to a space of, like, you know, like much music. And, and when, when, um, when much music would have those, the, the, those dance mix, um, tapes and CDs, like, this is probably on like Dance Mix 90, 94 or whatever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, so, big tune, so man. Right. Big tune. Right. Man, when they were cut, yo, that's my high school. And when they were coming out of that car, I was like, yo, man, they dug the hole in the beach so they could crawl out. I, I was tripping over this video when I was 12, 13 years old, man. This was so good, man. And, so good. And, 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 yeah. And this was before, before Gangsta's Paradise. So, like, yeah, yeah. this was a time where hip hop was fun. This song, yeah. like, nobody. Nobody thought Coolio was a sellout. He was just another dude dropping songs. He wasn't no pop star. He wasn't like, well, whatever. This was, he was just like a rapping dude out there. Like, this was a dope yeah. song from my high school days, man. This was, yeah, man. And Yo, yes, right, yeah, right, right, shout out Fantastic Voyage DJX for sure. Oh, the original, the original Lakeside. Yeah, come on. We've got to pay the homage. Yeah, yeah, no, true indeed. But th- this video almost this kind of reminds me of of of, of, of Skilo, you know. Like I wish I was a little bit yeah. taller. And he, he's also from the West Coast as well, and th- this was kind of like the West Coast like vibe, you know, where it's just like the barbecues, the vibe, the beaches, the way we like everybody just having a great time. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. oh, I love it, man. I love it. This this was straight early West. Look at that. That's basically yeah. a Snoop Dogg video with like a little less guns in in forties. Like <laughs> this was. Look, be reals up in this shit, man. Like <laughs> Julio was a real one, yo. Like this shit was real West Coast vibes, early nineties. Oh man, it's so classic. Man, I used to bang this shit hard, man. Oh, took me <laughs> back with this one. Took oh man, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, man. Yo, shout out Julio. I really wish I got to see him. And that's dope that you saw him, righteous, and that you even met him, man. I, I, I just saw something real quick, and like that's it. it it's actually yeah. like. The reason why we have to definitely, and for the next year, or, or, until the motherfucking wheels fall off, capture as many I- interviews and videos as we can, is because right before this, I just saw a video of Eminem uh, doing a, 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 a like a, a clear, like straight up, honest video, no, just direct, straight to the camera, and he was like, "I want to say to Pat Stay how All much right. I really." phenomenally thought you were one of the greatest battle rappers it was just like like 30 45 seconds eminem is talking directly to the camera nothing else just black background and he's just like shout out to pat's day mad love and eminem he goes i never got a chance to meet you but i really i've respected you i've 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 watched you for years and what and it's like 
This is so fucking massive. Wow. It because is because that it show is. we were at, that show we were at, uh, Big Daddy Kane took one moment to say, first off, rest in peace, Pat Stay." With clear, he's like, he didn't have to do it. Pat, he he did that to say it from his heart to the right. whole crowd. And Kane was being like, I recognize a legend, and I'm telling you, Canadians, rest in peace, Pat Stay. So then right. seeing Eminem do it, I'm like, yo, man, like, and and and, and I'm just saying like. And, and being like, I never got a chance to meet him. I'm like, yo, man, I met Pat Stay like five, six times, man. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. like seeing these people is even just once, man. It's everything, man. So like, really shout out to right, even seeing Coolio once. It's like, don't even matter, pop record, whatever. You're part of the culture, yo. You contributed. But like, your life is valuable. And like, just one moment together is, is precious. That's it, man. We gotta enjoy these moments, you know. Uh, it's it's a yeah. lesson in procrastination, you know, something that I gotta work through and whatnot. But yeah, man, like you know, like tomorrow's not promise, you know what I mean? So make those connections today. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's like for me, I, I just want to find the fine line between like being a asshole dick and like forcing everything immediately. Oh no, and for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. True indeed. Cool. Sometimes I'm like, yo. <laughs> yeah, haul it now. Come, <laughs> but then some people are like, yo, you know, let's just be wait, patient, whatever. No, you know, no, it, no. It, it, it's to happen. Well, hopefully, we'll align and we'll all yes, make sir. these things happen. But we on our mission. We gonna keep one week by week, just collecting and, and sharing. We got to. Yeah. Thank you for that um, amazing, amazing edit of that director X video. Yo, yeah, yeah he's doing that know, movie. Cool. That. That's right. Robin yeah, is coming out. Uh, we'll we'll definitely uh, you know as like the trailers start rolling out, we'll get some more information on that. But uh, yeah, he's uh, d- directed a a really cool uh, uh, television series that takes the the concept of Robin Hood but makes it like with an urban spin. And there's some really interesting uh, surprises and guests and whatnot. So we'll get into that as, as things roll out. I believe it's going to be aired maybe later on this year or early next year or so. But shout out Director X, big up to him for always just showing love. And, you know, it was easy piece to do an interview, man. He was like, yeah, let's do it. So it's all yeah. good. And we're going to keep bringing you all the real as reminisce show, his story, Stolen from Africa, man. We're just out here making sure we preserve our stories and telling it on our own time through our own voices. So we're going to continue that's to cool. do it. So stay tuned, do, man. Stay tuned. All right. So, yo, fam, so, that's, uh, that's it's always, been good talking to you. That's right. Everyone, righteous, yo, all our people, Colleen, yo, Natalia. Please, please. I hope get, up, get you up on here in the next couple of weeks. So it'll be great. Yo, all the people that support, mad love, mad love. Shout out to my homegirl, Sairupa. It's her birthday today, too. And, uh, peace, peace. Yeah, it was, I think it was Black Thought's birthday like two days ago. Um, hey, we got to go. Yeah, Black Thought turned 51. Um, oh, and the last thing I want to say is like there's a countdown right now. I think it's 15 days to Eminem's 50th birthday. Wow. So, a lot of people are being, yeah, yeah, it's like, yo, Eminem's turning 50, and it's like, yo, man, this dude, this dude almost died at 35. Like, imagine right? him dying. So it's like, yeah, you, you can't take That's nothing, cool. none of this for shit for granted. Nobody and, like, yeah, shout yeah. out to everybody. Everybody stay strong and healthy, especially my brother Logic. I'll be getting better. Get right now, man. I'm out. I'm signing off for the night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, yo, peace and love. And we out here next week. My remedy show every Tuesday, carrying the dishes of St. Kofa, because sometimes we got to go back and collect what we may have forgotten. Peace, love, always. And we see y'all next Thanks. time. Yeah. Thanks, Colleen.